Do you guys want the ultimate 4 2 3 1 tactic that scores lots of goals, defends well, and can be used with any stand of the team? If you do, then do stick around. So, guys, it is Josh from FM Scout here today, and I'm going to be bringing you another creation from NAP. It is going to be a 4 2 3 1 variant. And this tactic is honestly a ton of fun to use. By the way, it's nice to be back on the channel. Obviously, we had a little bit of drama where the channel did get hacked, and that was not great, but we are back now, and we are uploading on FM Scout. So anyone that does come over from my channel, I do appreciate it. Anyone that is from FM Scout that likes me uploading, then I appreciate that too. But we have got a great tactic to break down today, and as you can see here, we're going to start off by testing with one of the powerhouses. Now, don't worry, we have tested with five teams all different standards, not just gone with the top teams. So you're going to see how this tactic performs with variation of different teams. Now, we're going to start off with Manchester City because that is the first one that loaded up. So as you can see, a very, very dominant season with Erling Haaland scoring 131 goals. We also won the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup and the Community Shield. We also did win the Champions League, which I'm going to show you because I don't know why it's not showing on this. So I'm going to show you in the schedule in a second. Scoring 164 goals and only conceding 26. Going over to the data hub, team attacking 4.32 goals per game. So you're going to be scoring over four goals a game, which is absolutely exceptional stats. In terms of defendant, 0.68. So under a goal a game, over four goals a game scored. You can't really go wrong, but I have got to show you this quickly because I don't want you to think I'm lying. We're going to scroll down here. You can see how, how flawless this is when used with a dominant side. As you can see, see here, sorry, against Sevilla, which obviously also was one of our tests. So that might be why it's not showing up. Anyone that doesn't know in the comments why it wasn't showing up, do let me know. But that was a very comfortable 5-0 win. And obviously that was both systems coming against each other. So... You know, when you put two, two of the tactics exactly the same against each other, Manchester City team, Sevilla side, it's going to be quite an easy final. But there you go. You can see here, obviously, one on penalties in the FA Cup final. Um, quite a dominant display all around, entire, every single competition we dominated, to be honest. But that is to be expected with Man City. So let's hop over now to an underdog side and see how we done. So this is what things are going to look like if you are an underdog side. And Everton, in my opinion, are definitely an underdog side. Not much going for them in real life, in my opinion. No disrespect to the Everton fans, but we managed to get them Champions League football, which is a massive accomplishment for this club. 102 goals scored, only 41 conceded. Also got to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Unfortunately, we do end up losing to Manchester United, but they are superior opposition, so can't do too much in that situation. Calvert-Lewin, though, does score 46 goals, and it's going to be Damari Gray with 19 assists. We look into the data hub here, and we're going to start off with defending just over a goal a game a goal a game sorry conceded sitting at 1.08 but still very solid Can, you know you've got a no disrespect again but Everton's defense is rather shaky so to be conceding that little is actually quite a good accomplishment we go over to the attacking over two and a half goals a game so that is very good to see obviously just over a goal conceded over two and a half um, goals scored per game so in terms of the data hub stats, you can't really go wrong. Um, obviously, with this team, there are things you can do. Possibly going into games with a slightly more cautious mentality would be one of the things I would recommend. Obviously, I didn't do that because I do holiday simulate these. But if I was using a team like Everton, like a, possibly a Wolves, um, a Leeds, one of them sort of teams, I would definitely look to possibly go in against the top sides a little bit more cautiously because you do leave yourself very vulnerable right from kickoff. But let's hop over now to... The lowest standard aside we tested with. Then hop over to Bath in the Vanarama National League South. And it was a very good season. We sort of blew the division away, to be honest, with a 10-point advantage over second place, scoring 121 goals and only conceding 41. Not the best cup run in the FA Cup, but a decent run in the FA Trophy, getting all the way to the final, where unfortunately we just didn't have enough to beat Notts County. Cody Cody Cook coming in there, sorry, with 78 goals. And it's going to be three people. You've got Scott Wilson, Danny Grenslade, and Alex Fletcher, all with 18 assists. I've never seen that many people get joint assists before, but that just shows everyone was getting involved, I guess. So a very good season. We're going to go into the data hub quickly then. Team attacking, 2.63. So quite a high amount of goals for this division, in my opinion. Anything over two goals is what I definitely is the minimum I look for in a tactic. Obviously, with this team as well, 
the quality isn't the best, but also the teams you're playing hasn't got the best. So it sort of should add up. And that is why you are going to be scoring over two and a half goals per game. Obviously, we can look at the stats of Man City. We can look with the stats of the team I'm going to show you in a second. And they are going to be higher scorers. But you've got to take into account some of the players they've got. In defending, under a goal a game conceded, which I'm very happy with in this division. It's a very tricky division because there are a ton of games. There's a lot of teams that can beat each other, in my opinion. Obviously, Bath are one of the teams that are predicted to go up but also there are another sort of six teams that can also compete so it is a bit of a scrappy scrappy division to be honest but we come out on top and that is all that matters i'm going to go over to another powerhouse which is going to be psg probably the best team in the game to actually test with because it's an absolute just it's destruction it really is 175 goals scored only 14 conceded Kylian Mbappe with 63 goals and Lionel Messi with 48 assists, doing what he does best at the end of the day, which is everything, let's be honest. We absolutely thrashed the French division, 114 points compared to Lille's 70, and to be honest, there's not much else we didn't do. Um, as you can see here, the French Cup, we won against, I believe that is going to be Lille, and the Trophy de Champion, we won against FC Nantes. A very convincing season. Usually you do expect to see this over PSG. There would definitely be something wrong if it was wasn't a dominating season. Team attacking 4.61 goals per game. Obviously, that is it is stat padded in this division. I mean, that is absolutely outrageous. Over four and a half goals per game, and a defending ridiculously solid as expected, 0.37. So very, very good. And I like to show you guys every angle. So if you're going to play as a powerhouse like a Man City, which is in a very tough division, you saw how Man City looked that made that division look very easy. But if you are one of these people that play as a Bayern, a PSG, for example, um, or you're into a save years down the line and you're just dominant, this is what you can expect to see with this system. But we're going to go over to the last save, which is, again, an underdog team in the relevant division. So we've now covered two top teams, two underdog teams, and one, obviously, very low standard team. And that is going to be Sevilla. Now, obviously, there are weaker teams in this division, but teams above them, um, in terms of squad quality, in my opinion, would be Real Madrid, Barcelona, um, Atletico Madrid, possibly Villarreal as well. Um, some really good teams in this division. And we've come out and managed to actually finish in second place, only by a point as well, um, with a fantastic amount of goals scored. You're going to have 157 goals scored and only 44 conceded, which actually is relatively... It's quite a few, obviously, with rank and fifth best in that. So, you know, the goals that we scored definitely did help sort of counter that. And obviously, we outscored a lot of teams. We also did win the Spanish Cup against Barcelona. So we didn't leave empty-handed. Obviously, Champions League football, a trophy under our belts. I don't think that's too bad in the first season with Sevilla. Rafa Mir coming in with 57 goals. And it's going to be a Kuna, who is obviously going to be a fullback, who I did actually believe have a little stint on the wing when I looked at some of these results which is a bit strange, but it is down to the assistant manager. Do let me know in the comments as well if you guys know if Akuna can play anywhere up the pitch because he might be able to, and I just don't know. But a ridiculous amount of assists coming in from him. In terms of the data hub, then team attacking, 4.13. So a very, very high stat line there with obviously an underdog side in this division. Very impressed with that. And defendant just, I think that's the most we've conceded, 1.16. But that's still quite a, it's not many goals per game when you are scoring over four. So it definitely does sort of help you are scoring over four goals a game because then you can afford to concede a goal a game, which you don't do every game, but obviously over a season, that is how this is broke down. So that is going to be the test and phase of the video done. I'm now going to pick out a game where we can watch some of the goals, talk about how the tactic to sort of break down and how it goes forward. And yeah, let's go and pick out a game. So we're going to be watching the Carabao Cup final against West Ham. And it was a very comfortable 4 0 win. And it started off very early, actually, with Lanzini trying to drive forward a little bit. De Bruyne wins it back magnific magnificently sorry, in the midfield. A ball over the top into Julian Alvarez. And who is that in goal? Because a shocking keeper. And it is Ariola, first team keeper. And it just goes into the bottom left hand corner. But I think the keeper will be having nightmares about that later because that is an awful goal to concede. We go again instantly here then with Gomez, a ball into the box, into Erling Haaland, the best striker in the world, in my opinion, at the moment, who tucks it in for 2 0. Phil Foden down the right hand side, just going forward. No one really putting any pressure. He cuts back, a ball into Ake, who hits it first time. And again, I would look to question Ariola in that situation, but. Ake, it's a good finish. Obviously, it just shows the players that do look to get into the box from the set pieces. Jack Grealish here on the left-hand side into Ake. A ball like, into Grealish who hits it. A little bit of a deflection and quite a lucky goal there. A few of them goals, if not all of them goals. Um, 
I think the keeper could be questioning himself. But West Ham were playing a full strength team. Um, I don't know what happened to him there. Ariola is he's an okay keeper, two and a half star. You know, it's it's not the best, but I do think he should be performing better than what we have been seeing there. But overall, a very comfortable final, and that leaves us one more thing to do, which is to break down this amazing tactic. So guys, before we do break down this amazing tactic, if you are enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like on the video and do subscribe to the FM Scout channel. If you do want to see more from myself personally, I also do upload videos on my own channel, which are tactics and rebuilds, which can be found in the description. And if you do want to download this tactic and test it out yourselves, you can do that by simply clicking in the description and you can go and find it. Again, full credit to Nap for making these tactics. He does it all year round and does a great job. So be sure to show some love to Nap in the comments, but let's break down this tactic. So we've seen quite a few 4-2-3-1s over just this year alone, to be honest. It always is a popular formation. Same with a 4 3, 3. Now, this is slightly different in the fact that there is two Volantes in the midfield, which did work really well. But we're going to start things off by doing this side of things. So the mentality is going to be set to attacking. Now, obviously, I did mention if you're an underdog team, you could go in possibly switching that to positive would be a more sensible option, in my opinion. In possession, you want to have fairly wide pass into space, overlap left and right, focus play down the right and the left, so you're not really going through the middle at all. All the work is done out on the wings. Work the ball into the box is on, low crosses, run at defence, with pass directness set sorry, to shorter and slightly higher tempo selected. In transition, you want counter press and counter, distribute to the fullbacks and throw it long. Out of possession, you want a high press line of engagement, a standard defensive line, trigger press is going to be set to much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, going over to the player roles, we're going to go over all of them and we're going to start off with the striker this time. It's going to be an advanced forward on attack. He's going to be told to pass it shorter, shoot less often, roam from position, tackle harder and move into channels. On the left-hand side, you've got an inside forward on attack. Pass it shorter, shoot less often, close down more, tackle harder, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, cross less often, and get further forwards. And I believe on the right-hand side, it's slightly different, so I'll read it out again, but that is also going to be an inside forward on attack, and that is going to be pass it shorter, shoot less often, sit narrower, close down more, tackle harder, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks and cross less often with get further forwards on. Now, one thing I'm noticing, there is a lot of tackle harder. If you guys are sick and tired of players possibly getting booked too often, this does work because it is an aggressive style. But if you are annoyed at your players getting booked, simply tick it off and that will sort of change how it plays a little bit, but you will stop getting them bookings. Now, in the middle... We're going to have an attacker midfielder on attack, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, move into channels, tackle harder and get further forwards. Now we've got the, the part that makes this formation unique, the bit that I really love about this tactic, is going to be these two in the middle. So, two volantes on support, pass it shorter, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, get further forwards, close down more, tackle harder and mark tighter. And next to him, a few less instructions on the right-hand side, take more risks, dribble more, shoot less often, get further forwards and tackle harder. If you guys for some reason haven't got players that can play in this role, a deep line playmaker, something like that would work just as well. Now, going over to the defence, you've got two wing-backs. The right-back is going to be an attacking wing-back, Pass it shorter, sit narrower, close down more, tackle harder, mark tighter, run wide with the ball, cross from byline and get further forwards. The left back is also a wing back on attack and I believe it's exactly the same. So I won't read it out twice because they are literally a replica one like the other. Two ball playing defenders in this system, both on defend, pass it shorter, dribble less, take more risks and hold position. And it's exactly the same for the right-sided one. So you only need to listen to me once on that one. And the goalkeeper is going to be a sweeper keeper on defend, take fewer risks and tackle harder. That is going to be this tactic broken down from that. Again, a fantastic release. So a shout out to him indeed is needed. 4-2-3-1, again, one of my favourite tactics this year. Do let me know in the comments what your favourite tactic of all time is in Football Manager. That's an interesting topic. Across every Football Manager you've played, what is your overall favourite tactic? Because, you know, I'm always keen to see what you guys like to play. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. As always, do leave a like on the video, subscribe to the FM Scout channel, but I will see you in the next one.